They're so dumb. Flash meat. They're all so stupid. So I am going to show you guys my current favorite build in Diablo after leveling four different classes now. I just always gravitated towards Druid and this is my favorite Druid build, which I had changed. So I had started leveling a Pulverizer build and it started to fall off around like level 70. It just, the single target damage was really bad. The AOE damage was really good. So I, so I needed a change. I was looking for something to swap to and I got this thing dropped and this kind of changed everything so this build is fantastic uh this is by far the tankiest build i never have to worry about my life ever i'm constantly fortified and it actually has really good single target damage and just has a lot of ease if you're looking for a class to just easily push through content without worrying about dying and just kind of put yourself in cruise control as a melee class this is definitely the build i would say the only some of the negative uh about the about the build is it doesn't necessarily have the biggest like crowd chain clearing uh but it gets the job done and there's things that you can do to adjust that okay so we're gonna just go over the skill tree to start off so yeah this class is called what storm claw storm claw and we had some help setting this up from uh, different types of materials and talking with chat and uh, whatnot. But so what you're going to do is because you're using the crone, the great set for the crone, it's turning your, your claws now a storm skill and also casts storm strike at 147% damage. So I actually got a pretty good roll in this. I also got the nine additional ranks of claw. So you're going over here and you're maxing out storm strike and claw and the coolest thing about this build because it's unique is it allows you to only cast auto or basic attacks so i'm not using any sort of core skill i'm not using any sort of resources so there's no, absolutely no management at all of resource there's zero resource management which makes it a really easy build to use uh you're going up into fierce storm strike for vulnerability and you're going over to Wild Claw for the chance to attack twice. So every time you're spamming your basic attack, you're spamming both Storm Strike and Claw. So you definitely want to max those out. Um, now, this is just my version of the skill tree. There are many, many different uh, nodes here that you could spec into, but this is just what I think feels the best at this particular moment. Uh, you're putting a uh, point into Cyclone Armor up into Preserving Cyclone Armor. Then Now, Cyclone Armor pretty much acts as... Uh, I'm using it mostly for a passive and kind of like an oh shit button if my alt is ever on cooldown. Uh, but you're using it for the passive uh, powerful wind surround you, granting 10% non-physical damage. And then every 10 seconds, Cyclone Armor intensifies, causing incoming damage to grant you 30% damage reduction. So this is a really good defensive. This class is very much about using defensive skills and keeping yourself buff and debuffing the incoming damage to you and granting lots of damage resistance um you're also putting a point into blood howl into preserving blood howl and this is a key part of the build right here this 15 percent attack speed you're pretty much just going to be spamming blood howl and every time you get a kill it's going to reduce your blood howl cooldown so you're going to be able to essentially just spam this on cooldown you're also putting a point into debilitating roar uh this is fortifying you healing you and granting you seven percent damage reduction now another option is to go up here into shred and use shred down into primal shred for like some movement so you can zip zip from target to target to target i just prefer to use all the defensive skills um instead now you wouldn't use shred as a as a damaging skill you would use it as a movement and essentially a defensive skill uh you're putting three points into vigilance for every single time that you're spamming basically blood howl or debilitating roar or cyclone armor you're getting uh, damage reduction 15%. Uh, we're going down here. So this is where, these are a lot of changes that I made and there's a lot of different options, but we're doing hurricane up into savage hurricane for once again, the additional 20% less damage. And we are spamming hurricane a lot. And I'll also explain why hurricane is super important. Uh, down here, we're putting one into neurotoxin. We're putting one into toxin claw. Now, the reason we're putting a point into toxic claws is because we want to apply poison 
to everything that we touch. So this is critical strikes with werewolf skills deal 8% of their damage as poison. So this is just to apply the poison, the benefit from things like damage to poison, uh, damage reduction from enemies that are poisoned, etc., etc., etc. And then we're stacking this, another benefit of the poison. So everything that we're hitting, especially elites and bosses, we're getting uh, this 30% critical strike damage more if you're rolling in Venom ranks on your amulet. So here, uh, we're putting one point into elemental exposure so that we can put a point into charge atmosphere, mainly for these two up here. So this is electric shock. This is a lucky hit chance when dealing lightning damage, AKA every single attack with storm strike. Dealing lightning damage has uh, to enemies has up to a 15% lucky hit chance to immobilize them. If the target is already immobilized, the lightning strike damage dealt to them is increased by 18%, which would be our storm strike damage. We're also putting into Bad Omen three points, up to a 30% chance when dealing damage to a vulnerable, immobilized, or stunned enemy that a lightning bolt also hits the enemy. Then, to pair with the immobilized, we're putting three points into Defiance for the increased damage to elites, and up here, your storm skills deal 12% increased damage to enemies that are stunned, immobilized, or knocked back. So that's pairing directly uh, with this one. And then we're going down here. We're buffing our fortify gains by 15%. And we're also putting 10% uh, chance when struck by fortify uh, to get your base life. We're getting fortify from debilitating roar. And the main source of fortify is going to come from grizzly rage. And this is pretty much the key to the entire build is grizzly rage uptime is 100%. So you're going to be an alt all the time and the strongest thing about this is this i believe is the best source of unstoppable in the entire game i could be wrong about that so don't crucify me if i am but you're essentially having constant unstoppable which means you don't have to worry about any sort of cc no matter what you're doing uh and this is also fortifying you at eight percent base life for every second that grizzly rage is active um and then lupine ferocity so this is guaranteeing crit strikes every sixth hit and what we're doing as i'll show you is we're stacking attack speed so that we're critting basically every second because this is going to ramp up really quickly and then our skills are also doing 70 percent increased damage on the crit every six hit and this is a werewolf skill claw now if we go over to the uh, gear, so what we're looking for are, since we want to keep up time of Grizzly Rage, what we're looking for is we're looking for cooldown reduction. We're looking for attack speed. Um, we're looking for lucky hit chance and we're looking for crit chance and lucky hit chance is actually very, very, very important on this build. So we want to stack on the helmet cooldown reduction, basic skill attack speed, because we want to hit as much as possible. Now, let me explain why attack speed. So if we're looking at the boons, we want to take 10% reduced damage from elites. I just think that's the best option in the top. And we want to take the attack speed in the middle here. This is allowing us to do as many hits as possible. We also want to do calamity, which is extending the duration of our grizzly rage by 25%. And then we want to go down here and grab calm before the storm. This is the next like most important part of the build is every single time that you do damage with a nature magic skill, which is going to be your two basic skills, there's a 10% lucky hit chance to reduce the cooldown of your grizzly rage by two seconds. And then you're also putting on masochistic for a little bit of extra heals. This is pretty much going to proc all the time. And that's what helps keep this build super tanky. So this is super important. These two are really important. Now, if we go back to here, you'll notice I have basic attack speed. Uh, basic attack speed on the gloves or just regular attack speed. We want to we want to do as many hits as possible because every single time that we hit with both of the basic attacks, because every click of the basic attack is going to proc two different hits, which has a chance to uh, proc the lucky hit two second reduction for Grizzly Rage. <clears throat> so by the time Grizzly Rage runs out, you want to have it up and ready to go again. So cooldown reduction, basic attack speed, maximum life. Uh, the strength here is not optimal. I would much rather have like another stat such as uh, willpower, for example. Uh, on the chest, you just want life, armor, damage reduction. Damage reduction is always super key. Here I have DR while fortified, flat damage reduction, total armor and maximum life. Not perfect, but you know, it'll work. Uh, on the gloves, these are actually pretty good gloves. Uh, if I could change one thing, I'd probably go maybe instead of the willpower as a crit, but I'm I'm totally happy with these. 
Uh, this is lucky hit chance, crit strike chance, and attack speed. Those are the three main things that you want. Down here on the pants, these are actually god tier. <laughs> um, these are damage reduction in every form, and these are conditional DR. So conditional DR is always gonna roll higher than just like a flat damage reduction. So you have DR from poison, you're poisoning everything, DR from distant, DR from close, and DR while fortified. These are absolutely fantastic. Uh, on the boots, you want movement speed, total armor in werewolf form, and damage reduction while injured. I'm actually a huge fan of DR while, while injured now. It's not the best thing for this class because you are keeping your health really full most of the time. So you could probably swap that out for something else. Um, the fortified gen is just really nice and I like it. Um, and then once again, great staff for the crone. This is pretty uh, self-explanatory here. I ended up getting a really, really, really good roll in this. Now for the amulet, I think rank of Envenom passive is a must have. And the other one is defiance. If you can get either two of those, that's a huge win because that's going to add your damage, your critical strike damage to poison and just your overall damage to elites. Uh, other things that you want to look for in here, any sort of damage reduction is huge. I got damage reduction from poison and just flat DR. And then you also want cooldown reduction. You need cooldown reduction on both of these. I highly recommend it. And then you could also throw movement speed on the amulet. I believe that rolls on there. Uh, on your rings, you want the standard crit strike chance, crit strike damage, and vulnerable. The fourth perk is up to you. You could roll things like maximum life. Uh, you could roll things like crit strike damage. You know, you could, uh, I would say probably those two would be your, would be your best bet for your fourth. Now, I know a lot of people ask, why aren't you running Tempest Roar? I just don't think Tempest Roar is worth it for this build. I think the sacrifices that you have to make in terms of losing basic attack speed and losing cooldown reduction and maximum life to put on Tempest Roar, which is the main thing it's going to do besides giving you some extra damage on your skills is it's going to make your storm skills count as werewolf skills, which would definitely give you some benefits, but I don't prefer it and i find that i actually have more downtime with grizzly rage when i run tempest roar so i don't think it's worth it i think for for storm claw druid tempest roar is not the play and if you like it then go for it but i just do not prefer it at all i've i've done lots of testing on it now and i just don't like it all right so let's talk about aspects on the gear uh a few of these things can change obviously crone has its own aspect uh, on the helmet, I'm putting disobedience for the armor. On chest, I'm putting damage reduction while shapeshifted into werewolf. And since we're using Grizzly Rage, we have the aspect on called Dire Wolf, where Grizzly Rage shapeshifts you into Dire Werewolf. You also gain 23%, or you also gain movement speed and spirit cost reduction, but that doesn't really matter. We're just here for the movement speed for the heals, but mainly to transform into dire werewolf. Then we have on the gloves, uh, we have grizzly rage duration is increased. Uh, you want to get the best roll possible. I do have one that's up to five seconds, luckily. Also critical strikes while grizzly rage is active, increase your critical strike damage by 10%. This thing is extremely busted actually, because uh, you you are turning yourself into a dire werewolf using grizzly rage and then your grizzly rage is increased and this crit damage stacks and it does some serious serious damage when you pop grizzly ridge you will see um, i'm doing basic skills grant 20 percent damage reduction um the might aspect because you're always hitting with basic skills so that is just a really strong one because damage reduction is king um, debilitating Roar is now a werewolf skill in addition to debilitating Roar immobilizes poisoned enemies. Well, you're poisoning everything and you have debilitating Roar on, so this is perfect. On my amulet, I'm choosing to put on the basic skills attack speed because if you get a perfect roll like this, you can amplify it up. And once again, this is all about attack speed. And then the final one is um, lucky hit chance when dealing lightning damage, which is every single attack to overload the target for three seconds. So overcharge is a pretty good aspect as well and will help uh, with some extra damage. If we go to the Paragon board. So uh, the par this Paragon board, I am taking heavy influence from a Paragon board on Mobilytics because this build was a build that I swapped pretty late into leveling my Druid. 
and I was brand new to the whole concept of Stormclaw. So I am using a uh, optimized Paragon board from Mobilitics. Now I'm, I'm adjusting it, making my own changes to it here and there, maybe swapping out some glyphs, but I'm just gonna go over the, the key, key components here. Also on the first board, we're coming up here and grabbing just the damage and the willpower. Riding up the left side, we're also grabbing the damage and the armor and the maximum life. And then on this first board, I believe this might be the only... No, it looks like I'm grabbing two. One of two legendary nodes that we're going to take. Uh, this is Thunderstruck. This board is really good for this build. Uh, Storm skills deal 30% increased critical strike damage against vulnerable or immobilized enemies. So that is pretty huge. We're also slotting the first one. We are slotting Territorial because Territorial is just pretty much god tier for this melee class. We're doing increased damage to close targets and getting the damage reduction. In this board, we're slotting Earth and Sky. So the uh, Nature Magic skills deal 10% increased damage to crowd controlled or vulnerable enemies. Everything's always going to be vulnerable. We're also grabbing the Scorn Storm skill damage and the damage reduction from vulnerable enemies. And then we're coming over here. We're grabbing the critical strike damage and damage to crowd controlled. We're grabbing the maximum life over here and then we're coming up here grabbing more crit damage more vulnerable damage and like i said we're grabbing that node then we're coming over here to the heightened malice board now this thing is seems like it's going to be better later in the game when things are chunky or when you're pushing higher tier content uh, right now i don't really see this proc as much as i'd like but i think it will uh, proc a lot more later we're slotting fang and claw uh, while in werewolf or werebear form, close enemies take 12% increased damage from you. Everything is close. We're taking the DR from enemies that are poison, and we're taking the damage reduction to poison enemies. And that's why it's so important that we're like poisoning everything is because we're reaping uh, so many benefits from enemies that are poison. We're also grabbing the armor nodes from here, and we're grabbing the maximum life from here. And then we're coming over here. Uh, this board, I kind of just dipped into for the attack speed, but I really like the attack speed. So we're grabbing all of these attack speed nodes, and then we're eventually going to come down here and grab uh, this glyph to get another glyph out of it. And then we're coming back up here. We're actually working our way up this side right now to grab more attack speed because attack speed is the most important thing. And we're slotting the werewolf, which is just additional damage in werewolf form and damage reduction while in werewolf form. We're grabbing the armor here and we're grabbing the shape shift skill damage here. And then the final board is going to be constricting tendrils. And all that we're really using this board for is we're just gonna slide in here real quick and we're gonna grab this glyph socket. And uh, I'm not sure what glyph, oh, exploit. I think I'm gonna put exploit here. So exploit will be my final glyph. So this will be what the entire Paragon board looks like um laid out and like i said we're pretty much just going to squeeze in here grab the glyph spec out exploit and then we'll be good to go so how to use the build and i'm going to show some gameplay as well i might even show some gameplay from like a higher tier push to show just how strong this build actually is oh uh gems i forgot about gems yeah i should have my bad i should have uh a blue gem in here <laughs> i had been swapping out my helmets to see what i like uh you want all blue gems for damage reduction while fortified greens for the crit damage to vulnerable and obviously the skulls in the uh, jewelry. So the order of operations uh, when you engage is you're going to pop your hurricane, your blood howl, and your debilitating roar. You can hold on to your debilitating roar if you want, but it doesn't hurt to just go in there and pop it, but it can be like an oh shit button. Uh, and then you're gonna pop your grizzly rage. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna spam your claw or your basic attack speed, which is gonna spam storm strike. And with all of the attack speed that you have on, you're gonna be doing lots of hits. And that's what makes this build really fun is it's really, 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 really fast. And your hurricane, which is also a storm skill, is going to damage enemies as well. And what that's going to do is nature magic skills, so your hurricane, your claw, and your storm strike, these are all, every single hit is going to have a chance to proc this two second cooldown. And when you're in damage, when, you, when you're in your grizzly rage, every time blood howl comes back, you wanna keep spamming it. Every time it comes back, spam it again, because this is gonna increase your attack speed by 15% every single time um, you activate blood howl. And then when Blood Howl, when your Grizzly Rage runs out, if you're doing everything correctly, it should be up and ready to go as soon as it runs out and you just activate it immediately again. So you're constantly in a state of unstoppable 
you're constantly getting damage reduction in fortify you're constantly getting attack speed you're constantly damaging with hurricane uh you are gonna have to proc hurricane before you go into grizzly rage if you're not using tempest roar if you're using tempest roar you can activate hurricane while in grizzly rage but i just activate it before i engage into the fight another thing is even though i don't have any points into rabies uh, when I'm in Grizzly Rage, it's going to replace Hurricane with Rabies because it's in the same uh, socket area. And Rabies is good if you're if there's a lot of stuff around you because you'll you'll bite the enemy for Rabies and then it'll spread poison to everything around you, and that will help with activating uh, heightened malice for the 45% damage bonus. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I think. I covered everything. But yeah, this build is extremely strong, and I think this is going to be the first character that I actually take to 100 and start pushing uh, some high-level stuff. So enjoy, and hopefully this helps. Hey, we got a butcher. First one today. Oh, Butcher, I was right. Oh, God, this is going to be such a pain. Bro, this is a meme. Bro. That was 111 butcher.